did the presentation uh, last time in uh, Microsoft Azure uh, Bootcamp. But for the Power Platform uh, Classmate, something I slightly modified to uh, suit it for the Power Platform. What you can do combining with the Azure AI to the Power Platform on the uh, AI part of it. This is the small agenda which I have for today. We'll discuss first about the AI landscape in general, uh, not specific to any uh, platform as such. It's the overall Microsoft uh, ecosystem on the AI landscape. To co-pilot an AI for the Power Platform, especially we deep, deep dive into the Power Platform uh, offerings, especially for the AI and uh, co-pilot. And next we jump into more of uh, AI builder which is a more important uh, topic to cover on the Power Platform. And I would do some small demo specific to Power Automate for now. Uh, in interest of the time, I'll just take up one of the scenarios for the Power Automate uh, and then just go through the AI concept plus the co-pilot on uh, Power Automate plus the Power Apps. OK, so before moving into this is just about myself. Uh, I'm more of an Azure MEP doing uh, Power Platform and uh, SharePoint Consultant as such. So profile uh, from the MEP perspective, I'm more into the Azure expertise. And in the professional, I do more uh, Power Platform, uh, Azure Web App, and SharePoint implementation. You can reach me on the blog and my X or the Twitter. I do have a YouTube channel which you can follow me or subscribe to me. I do more of a power platform YouTube these days and you would learn more on the custom connectors and some uh, nitty gritties or the complex scenarios which you face on the power platform especially. Okay, so let's talk about the AI scenarios or the ecosystem within the Microsoft platform. This is a broad spectrum uh, covering the whole Microsoft uh, ecosystem for the AI. Uh, from reading the AI, we should go from the bottom to top. Usually uh, for the Azure uh, or uh, the Microsoft AI platform. ML platform is the base level for all the AI, which means that Microsoft has already got the machine learning uh, long back and it has been the base or the skeleton for all the uh, AI, not just the Azure, it's for all the platform. Uh, it also applies to the Copilot as well because Microsoft has built their own uh, fundamental building blocks based on the Azure Open AI plus the models which they already have. So basically, if you uh, ML is the base, on top of it, Microsoft is offering uh, from the Azure basis, you would have Azure Open AI, decision making, language skills, and this speech translation, vision, so image conversion to uh, <clears throat> text. So all these are several components which are built on top of it. If you are kind of a data scientist and you are a more developer, you would fit into this stack. You should know more about the models. What are the models available? What are the algorithms you should know? And how do you do the LLM? How do you do the image to the speech or the text? So those kind of information you should really know and you should be a developer and the data scientist. And when you come into the third layer, which is the bot service, cognitive services, form recognizer. So those are built on top of the second layer. Uh, basically, the second layer would open up a connector or the API or the REST API to connect it to the third layer. Third layer is semi UI plus uh, the developer. Uh, if you take a bot service, you can either build your own bot connector or you can uh, create a UI for the bot connector through the channels. And similarly, it applies to all the other uh, component. So those are semi kind of uh, UI plus the API and the rest. Again, this is applicable to uh, developer plus the data scientist. If you have your own model and you want to refine your model and if you want to create and publish uh, using your open Azure Open AI, this one suits these three layer are the layer you would uh, most of the time you would work on developer plus the data scientist. 
then comes on top of it uh, the important layer which is the power platform which is the recent addition to uh, the azure ai uh, this is this const contributes most of the uh, power platform uh, stack you would see the power bi power apps power automate and the power virtual agent which is now called uh, copilot studio later i would go through go through with that uh, changes so pva is kind of no more as such you should do the copilot studio um this stack is more of uh, more for a citizen developer plus a kind of someone who knows uh, more of a power platform than uh, playing around the ai uh, models uh, this applicable to a business user as well so if you are more into creating more of a business process automation engine this would suit uh, best it doesn't have to know about any of the models all you need to do is just take out any of the existing model which is available already in the ai builder later i'll show you the demo and you just inherit from it and start building your own ai solutions you don't really know should know about what the component does it under the hood microsoft has built uh, already the existing models refined it and made it ready for you all you need to do, do is that start using it a little bit training of uh, model is required with your existing data and uh, you are good to go especially if you are using the power apps and power automate uh, the ai builder comes with uh, so many of the templates like the invoice processing bill processing uh, image to text so they have so many of the templates already in place which are built on top of azure open ai and the ml azure ml and you can even publish it to the channel which is the teams channel and on top of it uh, there are application which are built on uh, power platform especially if you have a microsoft dynamics crm microsoft dynamics fno you want to leverage on ai you would go through either through power automate or the power apps you can easily build your own uh, bot framework especially for the microsoft crm it's already been integrated with uh, power apps of the power automate all you need to do is that inherit from um, builder ai build your own bot or use your copilot studio to create your own fn uh, <clears throat> faqs and just uh, point it to your uh, microsoft crm and it can start using the fn uh, faq uh, support so that's how the stack is built on and you should really know what stack you are applying it to for example if you are more interested in uh, creating your own connector you have your own model from your own enterprise you want to play around and fine tune the model and expose more and more model as a connector then you would belong to the third stack which means that you have to be a developer you should know more of uh, the llm models and the algorithms you should know really more about it you don't really create your own model or algorithm you just have to know about it so that you expose it as a connector if you are just a citizen developer citizen developer is nothing but uh, who would uh, create a simple solutions out of low code no code that is the main objective of the citizen developer they will not program much like uh, javascript programming or uh, any other programming language they just use the mild uh, code which comes with uh, power apps especially the formulas and some business process with power automate so those are the citizen developers uh, if they want to leverage on ai they should already use the existing ai builder plus the copilot that's it so that's the main advantage of the microsoft uh, stack and you can see it here second thing about uh, the copilot how do you make use of the copilot to leverage in your business if you see the list of the copilots which are available in the market now microsoft has built copilot for everything if you have m365 copilot which does for word excel powerpoint which is on the top and the outlook there is a separate copilot for teams even there is a copilot now available for azure uh, one node for platform ping and then github each one has their own strength and uh, features uh, i i will not discuss each one out of it because each one has its own uh, purpose and uh, uh, features 
we'll go through only about the power atom power platform for now from the power platform copilot offers variety of uh, uh, features within uh, different platform again say for example if you are doing if you want to leverage a copilot for power apps you can create your own app easily leveraging the dataverse as a backend and create a simple application and just publish it into your enterprise example if you are building a simple leave application or any simple uh, approval process within your business you can just um, just by a simple prompt to the copilot you can mention that uh, i need to create a simple leave application with my database it is uh, with the uh, storage of uh, certain information pull data from the azure ad and some of the document from the sharepoint automatically it will create a screen forms dataverse it even creates your backend you don't need to uh, worry about even the data uh, table structure in the dataverse it automatically creates a table adds an entry point and it presents you the power apps form and coming to the power automate it can even simulate your business process just by the prompts like for example you can say you can just prompt to power automate saying that hey i have a document in one drive with this excel read the excel get the data and combine the data with the sharepoint and just expose it create a html file and then just uh, send it out an email it can do that automatically uh, copilot will create all the actions needed for that and it will completely uh, create a business process to you and when it comes to the power bi copilot can create a report kpi dashboard you just have to specify the scenario connecting to the existing data automatically it will create a kpi based on the contextual you can just specify the prompt saying that just give me a sales report for uh, the year 2024 or something which you can specify automatically it knows that uh, what are the details or uh, the information which the people would be needed and it will create a report based on that so those those are the main advantage of using the copilot within your power platform and you can enable it and then use it in your uh, environment so that's more about the copilot and you'll have to be ready i mean uh, these days at the top level m36 level most of the organization is trying to enable copilot within their enterprise so start leveraging the power of copilot uh, next is about how really the copilot works or the ai within the copilot or ai within the microsoft framework works this is just to have a knowledge about how the copilot gets the information for you uh, uh, not a mandatory to know but it's good to know that how a copilot gathers data from your enterprise how you can segregate the data how you can secure the data which copilot trying to use it and add a policy around the copilot so that your information is not leaked out or something which is not to be shown is shown to the users uh, so if you take the architecture of the copilot go by the number which is arranged here number 1 the everything starts by the prompt so you'll have to enter the prompt to make the copilot to know or to get the information from assume that you entered some prompt to the copilot what it does is it automatically uh, does the pre processing and the grounding grounding meaning that it tries to understand the contextual sense of your prompt and that's about the second point the second is about uh, how it understands the grounding it has to gather information from all over the m365 how does it gather the information from all m365 that's how the microsoft graph uh, framework comes in so when it goes to the point number 2 uh, the path 2 a uh, graph framework has access to everything within the m365 outlook excel word powerpoint sharepoint uh, even some of the microsoft uh, dynamics information through the dataverse so those are by the graph framework once you are into the once you are within your enterprise it's all sso so it knows uh, what are the information it can get it goes through the plugin and you can see the microsoft graph can provide the information which is uh, providing in 
then goes to the path three, which is more of a LLM, large language model. Uh, it sends the information to the large language model and the copilot will receive the LLM response. You can see it on the path four. Once it receives, what does the LLM does is there is a uh, kind of an algorithm or the model which is built in already that would try to contextualize your data or the prompt which you are looking for. Like, for example, uh, if you ask Copilot about uh, RAG, give me some information about the RAG which uh, I've been working for the long uh, past one month. Meaning that it should contextualize saying that RAG in this sense is more of uh, like red, amber, green related to a project. So it has to do more about more about the project information. So it will get the project related information and try to give you details. And if the same RAG, like for example, uh, the same prompt, I say that RAG, give me some detail about the RAG which you are, which uh, I'm trying to refine the uh, model. So that what it does is in this context, RAG is nothing but is uh, mentioning more about the algorithm and the model which LLM is using. So it has to bring in more details about uh, the RAG. So it's more of contextualizing the details which Copilot tries to understand from your prompt. And finally, when it uh, brings uh, information, it to it, 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 it has to adhere to your compliances. Inside your M365, administrator might have added uh, the overall compliances and the uh, security roles. So it has to adhere your security roles and finally it brings out data only which is relevant to you. It should not show data which which is not to be supposed to uh, looking for. So that's how the Copilot architecture works. So this is just the basics of how it works. Okay, so next, before you jump into more of how to use, make use of the AI within your Power Platform, we focus more on the citizen developer. Professional developer, uh, there are basically, before I jump into the citizen developer, there are two types of developers which Microsoft often mention in the Power Platform scenarios. Uh, first one is about the citizen developer and the second one is the professional developer or the pro developer. The professional developer are the one who uh, are more familiar with specific framework like the JavaScript, C Sharp. They are, they are a normal programmer who does everything for you. On top of it, uh, there is a citizen developer. What he usually does is that he doesn't know too much of the programming, but he knows the concept. He would interact with business and he can learn some of the business uh, framework within the enterprise and he should know the applications within the power platform, especially like uh, example, certain citizen developer who would be expert in the power apps. Some of them would be more into power automate, but they would integrate with the business, understand it, and then without writing much of a code, which is low code, no code, they can create an applications. So that's how we call it as a citizen developer. For a citizen developer, this is kind of a cheat code or cheat sheet for uh, start building something on the AI. If you are a citizen developer and focusing more on, want to leverage on the AI, Microsoft has already segregated this into uh, four or five major uh, framework. I would say more into uh, modules. So AI builder, consist of these kind of a five modules, which you can make use of the technology which are already there in the AI. You don't need to really know about much what, what happens inside the system, but you can leverage the AI models. Uh, example on the left, if you see the document processing, this is more for a business to uh, leverage the existing models for invoice processing. You can see that invoice processing, receipt processing, and then uh, recognition. So it has all the business card reader information. So whichever the basic business need, you can make use of the document processing module. Uh, this module is much helpful 
if you already have the existing receipts which to which is to be converted into your entry um last time when i was working with an enterprise i have uh, literally used the invoice processing and the receipt processing one of the main use case for these two is that assume that uh, last time i was working with the retail industry for uh, doing uh, ai stuff so every day they come up with the multiple invoices and the receipts into their system and previously they used to use the power automate or the rpa tool to get the detail and they had internally a uh, pdf converter tool and it was very troublesome for them to integrate multiple systems to get the data from the pdf or the scan document and put it into their sql database after they moved into the power platform it was just everything in one umbrella uh, they have to just upload all the receipts or the invoices into the one drive that's it even uploading into one drive is nothing but they just save it in your, in in the sharepoint or in a central uh, repository then it automatically is available in the one drive and the power automate can read from the one drive and it, what it does is it will uh, process all the invoices and it will just insert into the sql using the sql connector of course you need a premium connector to connect all those and the licensing cost is involved uh, but this get the done job done much easier and the accuracy of the models were like i would say an, uh, 90 to 95% because most of the invoices and the receipts were uh, somewhat similar there was not much of a different uh, receipt or the invoices so we just uh, trained the system with uh, 20 or 25 types of the invoices then it get the job done it was much easier and simpler so it was much working out in the in our scenario the second one on the right is the text processing uh, this is more of uh, uh, analyzing the text which comes from your uh, system like for example if you have a sharepoint with the tons and tons of documents and you want to understand the customer information or how does that uh, all the customer review information or the text comes out from a system whether what is the sentiment out of it then you can do with uh, the text processing collect all the crm customer information or the customer review put it into your own place feed into your system then it will automatically does the sentiment analysis similarly it can understand at the uh, context at what context these customer reviews or the review statement comes from given a entity you just have to segregate by the entity by or by the uh, keyword phrase it can automatically form a complete map out of what the customer is trying to say like if it is if it is about the car if someone says that uh, engine size or uh, some feedback about the car uh, module of the car or the parts automatically the entity will come in and it understands tries to contextualize the customer review based on specific parts within the uh, vehicle or the car so that kind of information it can bring in and then it can even give you the full map about the processing and similarly on the left if you go image processing it can when you upload an image it can try to detect an object within that image those kind of which are already there and also you can do the generative ai which is more uh, these days are very famous like especially integrating the chat gpt you can create your own uh, chat gpt within your uh, power platform and the structural data processing like how do you predict and if you take this diagram uh, the blue ones are the one which is already built in and the uh, pink are the purple one is more of uh, custom you can do a custom if you already have a model you want to plug it in make, make use of it you can still do it uh, because everything works under the same framework of azure open ai so everything is built on top of it all you need to do is just to have Uh, azure open ai account log in and then try to upload your uh, thing similarly copilot studio there is a opportunity tons of opportunity to create your own uh, model customize the model and then uh, try to add into your system so that's how it uh, works in
So let me jump into the demo part of it. Okay, so this is just a small kind of a demo to give you understanding on basics of how do you make use of the AI within your power platform. So for this, I'm uh, even in this scenario, I'm taking to a specific application, which is the Power Automate. Uh, in most of the scenarios, Power Automate is being used with AI Builder. Why? Because the same scenario which I mentioned you in your enterprise, especially last time when I was working with the retail enterprise, all the invoice processing, your receipt processing is happening at the background. Uh, so most of the time, Power Automate is the one which would use the AI Builder component and then start leveraging your uh, existing component. Example, let me go into the flow which I already have. So if you are new into the AI Builder, the first thing is about the licensing. You will have to buy the license. Uh, AI Builder is always licensed based on the usage. The more and more usage, the more and more cost. So minimum you should have uh, either one of the licenses, which is a power, power, plat power apps per user license or the Power Automate per user license. And you'll have to add credit. It goes by the credit. You should buy a minimum some amount of a credit initially to start using it. When the credit goes down or being used up, then uh, some of the modules within the AI Builder will stop working. So you should make sure that the credits are applied and uh, you have enough credit to make use of the power uh, AI. So to start using the AI, uh, the first one is about go to the template. So click on more, you would see AI Hub here. In my scenario, I already been uh, Pinned it to the left, so you would see the AI Hub. Click on the AI Hub within the AI platform. You would see all your uh, opportunities within the AI. It takes a while to load. Okay, yes. Okay, so these are the, so if you come to the AI Hub, there are several possibilities you would see, and you can filter it by AI models. Let me go into AI models. Okay, so when I click on the AI models, you would be presented with multiple options. So these are the options which you see uh, being bucketed in. So if you are interested in documents processing, this is the document processing. So as I mentioned you in the pre <laughs> before cheat code for citizen developers, it has been structured in uh, four, four are the five different modules. So the document processing, if you want to make use of it, click on the document processing. And you can immediately click on any one of the, like for example, if you are using the invoice processing, just click on the invoice processing. <coughs> and you would be presented with two choice. One, you want to either make use in a flow or in an app. And whether you want to use your custom model. If you don't want to use your custom model, if you are happy with what, whatever the existing model, you can just make use of the existing one. So in my case, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the existing model, which is using in a flow. I just use in the flow. It gives me set of connections because what this uh, simple flow does is that whenever you upload a invoice PDF, it will automatically convert that PDF and read that into a structured table format, and it is going to send it as an email. And just say continue. OK, see here, everything is done automatically. Uh, this is the template which comes with AI processing or the AI builder. So basically, this AI builder is the component which has been added. This is looking for invoice file content, nothing but a file upload. And automatically, this AI builder will start doing it. The output of the AI builder, you are converting that into HTML. This is a normal uh, output. And then it gets your current profile or the person which is logged in and it will send an email. So it is sending an email of all the information which it reads from the uh, invoice. So basically how the AI Builder works is that 
the invoice processing will output certain information which has been trained. So this AI builder is trained to retrieve invoice ID, uh, your invoice date, and the total amount of the invoice. It even gives you how confident it is in reading the PDF file so that you can uh, train more and more. If the confident level is very less, then you can train and more and more with your existing invoice. OK, so I'm going to just save this. And test it out with the. Invoice. Which is already I have in downloads. I have certain. Apples. Okay, these are the sample and there is our invoices. Okay, let me show the sample here. So this is the invoice which I'm going to supply to the Power Automate sample invoice. You can see here some are handwritten and some are printed. So basically we are going to get this total amount and the invoice ID. These two are the main and the invoice date. So these information has to be picked up from this scan document and asked to send us an email. Okay. So let's go back to the Power Automate. It has saved. Test it. It is a manual power automate, so I'm going to test the manual power automate. Continue. OK, so now it started running. I'm going to import from the test document. Downloads, Azure AI, Azure AI Builder. And then invoices, Contraso, test six. OK. This is a sample. I'm going to run this. Let me open my email. Okay, this is my email. It is executing now. Takes a while to execute. OK, successfully executed. I should send, see the email. OK, see here, this is the email. So if I open the email, this is the same invoice. It, it got the invoice ID, which is the handwritten. And the confidence level, the invoice, date which is in this format and then amount so these are the information which it gathers from the invoice okay so let me open it and see side by side that is the okay the number it has picked up the number and the invoice amount and all the details about the invoice. OK, so this is more of more accuracy. So this is, I'm running it at the runtime and using the AI builder, so it works. OK, so let me close this. OK, let me go back to the power automate. OK, so this power atom is working and. That's how you use the AI builder. OK, uh, there are. So similarly, there are so many of the. Document processing, invoice processing, text processing, so you can make use of all the template which you already have business reader card and you can filter by and then find out which one you are interested in and you can start using the AI builder right now I'm using the trial version 
so when it runs out of it, then probably I'll have to extend my trial. But basically, this AI builder works uh, mainly by credit basis. You should minimum have some credit to make use of it. Okay, so that's how about the AI builder. Uh, I just crashed only just a sample of it. But with this AI builder, you can do so many of the stuff, which uh, with, which are kind of possibility is very uh, huge. The next one, I want to demo some Copilot stuff. Let's see whether I can use existing one. Let me create new one. Okay, so whenever you create a new Power Automate, automatically the copilot will be on the other side. And this is available only in the new designer. So you'll have to enable your new designer to make use of the copilot. And the copilot comes along with the designer. So now here you can, just by the prompt, you can specify to copilot that uh, what do you want to create in the action. So assume that if I want to read information from my SharePoint, let me open the SharePoint. Uh, I already had one website. And I have gone. Okay. Uh, vehicle type. Okay. So if you see here, I have a, I have a SharePoint site. This is the site, and I have a list called Sharp, uh, Singapore Car Database. In the list, I have a vehicle type. So what I'm going to mention in mention to Copilot is that uh, create create an action to read data from SharePoint list. Uh, read data from SharePoint site with URL. I know the URL, so let me use this. URL and the list. Singapore car database. Enter the item. Okay. Vehicle type. Uh, filter item. Filter the data. We have only luxury vehicle type. This is too much, but let's see whether Copilot can do. Basically, what I'm giving a prompt to Copilot saying that uh, just add an action to get item. Also filter only the luxury from that list. Okay. So what it does is it should do. Okay. See here. Copilot is great. See, it has done everything for me. It created an action with the URL which I specified and the list name which I have specified and also it added a uh, filter of the vehicle type luxury. So I didn't do anything. I, it's already ready. All the data which it comes from this, it can automatically get the data. So you don't have to drop. So you save uh, more of a time dropping the activity, finding out all the parameters, then uh, typing it, typing the parameters with the value. So all these can be saved. And again, uh, another update you can do is that you can even specify update uh, get items with the updated URL. You don't have to know about where it, where, which place you should go and update your uh, uh, parameters. So if you are very familiar with uh, all the actions within your Power Automate, just by the prompt to Copilot, you can specify 
what are the activities which you can do this is just a simple sample i have given you but you can create your whole business process uh, just by the prompts okay not uh, it's not uh, helpful i mean uh, it's not just stops there uh, the copilot you can extend uh, more of the questions or the prompts by summarizing what it does like for example the same scenario i can ask okay so it can even summarize what this flow does you can open any random uh, flow or the power automate and you can ask uh, copilot to summarize what it does it, it, it can give you full summary of what uh, flow it can do for example let me go back open one existing any of the existing thing I just click enter read it okay let me ask summarize this flow okay see here when i just say summarize this flow it tells you that uh, encrypts the text sentiment using a specified keys then decrypts that encrypted text and then sends it out and uh, just put it is in the con compose so copilot is really helpful in this scenario as well it's not used just to create a power automate but it also helps to summarize and understand what it does okay you can start exploring more and more functionality of the copilot uh, within it so that's how you start using your ai uh, as a citizen developer within power platform this is one of the application which i've shown you can start using it for multiple okay so that's all i have from my side hope you have a good session any questions nothing in the chat yet though okay i think no more questions then i would end my session thank you so much for joining thank you for the session sentiment really insightful if anyone has any questions, uh, please do post them in the chat and we can relate to Santamil and he can see as long as. Uh, yeah, see you. audible. Yes, go ahead. Perfect. And thank you. Thank you, uh, Santamil, for the great session. And this is really helpful. Uh, people to understand how, and the demo is really helpful the Power Automate, then uh, the comparison view, how exactly Azure can help. And I think uh, logic apps, we already saw a lot of things. Uh, in that note, uh, we will say uh, we have next session or we have break. Let me just have a look. Uh, maybe. I think this is a break now. It's a break. OK, perfect. Then uh, in that note, thank you. Thank you again, Sintamil, for joining and giving us the inside session. And thank you so much. In that note, uh, I will hand over the session to um my uh, fellow organizers priyesh and whoever yes. uh, they will take it forward and dr yeah, can you uh, stop the recording as well Mulak? yeah i'm stopping the recording so so next next onwards i think dr gomti you just continue to stop recording okay i'm stopping this time